Okay, so when you have your contours uh, successfully imported into Rhino, open Grasshopper. And again, this is how to take these contours and turn it into a nice clean surface. So open Grasshopper. If you don't, don't know how to use Grasshopper, this is actually a great way to learn how to use Grasshopper is to make surfaces out of contours. Let me uh, just move this thing out of the way. We don't need to look at that. Um, so in Rhino, before I do anything in Grasshopper, I'm going to make a layer called Bounding Box and set that Bounding Box to be my current layer. And then I'm going to go to a top view of the area that we want to turn into a surface and we're going to draw a box within the contours of the region that we want to turn into a surface. Um, it's very important that this box here fits, that it fits within the, the, the contours. It cannot be bigger, like this will not work. It has to be within the contours, like that. Let's see where that box is. Okay, so we're gonna, I'm going to move it a little bit lower than the contours. It works better when the box is a little bit lower than where the contours are. And then what I do is in Grasshopper. If you have any Grasshopper tutorial in the past, you probably would know how to do this. But you bring in your components using the parameters toolbar up here. So we're going to bring in a curve component and set a contours first. So I'm going to set all these together at once. And then we're going to set the bounding box as another curve down here like that. So I'm just going to label these so they're easy to understand. Contours and bounding box. So what you want to do now is you want to take these contours, you want to type in explode, then plug in the contours into the explode option here. And this turns all the contours into a series of vertices. That's what all these like dark red spots are. Spots are. And you want to use these vertices to create a mesh. So the way to do that is to type in Delaney mesh. It's this option right here. Then plug in the vertices into the Delaney mesh component. You want to make sure that this is flattened before you do that, though, because we want to mesh the entire set of points together. So that's what flattening it does for that. So this will take a second because it's a large data set, but it will work fine. Just give it a second. Okay, so when it's done, I'm gonna turn off the preview of the of the uh, explosion. And you can kind of see right now that it has created a mesh of those contours. This is not the final result, but if you bake that mesh by clicking on the component and clicking bake, and we're gonna bake on layer one, um, you'll see that it is a very, um, this is something that you know isn't very nice to work with is these meshes. You know, they're hard to adjust, they're hard to edit, um, and they are generally run really slowly. Like if I go to a rendered view, it's actually, it's not running that bad, but we want this to instead to be, uh, instead of being a mesh, we want it to be a surface. So I'm gonna just turn that off for now. And we'll go back to Grasshopper. And what we're gonna do is we're going to take this bounding box below the mesh and we're going to divide that into a series of points using the divide surface command. So divide surface. If you take this bounding box, you gotta turn it into a surface first by typing in boundary surfaces, like so. So this turns that bounding box into a surface, and then you plug this into that, like that. And then you wanna adjust the U and V numbers here to create a relatively high amount of points so that it creates a higher resolution end result. So uh, I might just use a number slider for this, and I might set that to 100. And uh, I might plug in that to U, and I might send another copy and paste that, and plug that into V. 
So that's all right. You might make it a bit more dense. Make it uh, 150. Oh wait, yeah, should increase the max range in order for that to adjust. So let's make that like 150. Let's make it 200. Let's make this 150. So it looks okay. Uh, the, the higher the density of these points, the better the surface will end up being, but it will take longer to process. <coughs> what you want to do is you want to type in a uh, function called mesh ray. So just type in mesh ray. Um, and if you don't know how I'm doing that, I'm just double clicking in the environment and just typing in the component that I want, mesh ray. So for the first line here, mesh, that's this item here. Plug that into the M. For the points, that's this here. So plug that into the P. And for the direction, that just means what direction are the vectors projecting, and that's just vertical, up. So you want to type in Z for the vertical Z unit vector. So that goes into the D. Give that a second. And then I'm going to turn off everything preview for everything, just except this here. So I'm going to turn on this as well. And you can kind of see that these points are now projected onto that mesh. We're almost done. To turn this into a surface, you type in surf from points, like so. Uh, P will be this grid of points right here. Uh, you want to make sure this is flattened, so just flatten that list of points before you plug it into P. U, this is the exact same number as this U value right here. As you can see, it's plugging into the U for surface divide. Um, you're gonna wanna add one to this though. So drag in this number to an addition component, then in B, just set that to one. Why? Um, I mean, real quickly, um, let me just go in here. You know, if you, If I take this uh, surface, this curve here, turn to, a, turn to a surface, and I divide that and say let's divide it by three and three. Uh, the reason why we need to add one to it is because even though we divide the u by 3 <coughs> and the v by 3, you see there's actually four points, right? So that's why you need to add one to the u value, is to get that extra point um, that was missing from that original value here. Um, so that's why we add one to this right there. So this gets plugged into u. And if it works, we're done. So. Give that a second to do its thing, and they're done. So now just make a new layer, call it surface, and then bake that. So right click S, bake onto surface, click OK. You don't need grasshopper anymore. And there you go. So now you have the surface of your site. Compare that to your mesh. You see this mesh is kind of messy looking. You can't really trim it. Your surface is much nicer and much cleaner. You can take this. You can cut a nice, let's say, a nice uh, long landscape section from that. So we take a curve and extrude that up. Then split this surface using that. You can hide that. Now you got a nice landscape section of your site. So uh, this, in a nutshell, is how you uh, take your contours and you turn it into a surface. Uh, ready for your studio project, whatever you want, whatever you want to do for it, for your renderings, all that fun stuff.